Hello everybody out here for the Hammer Game Channel. Welcome back to Kai's Redux and to a new playthrough where we're playing as New England. We're going to eventually become the Kingdom of New England and we're not going to send the Redcoats running, which would be pretty cool. Establish the Kingdom of America. We'll come back and play that some other time, but we're going to go ahead and do the King's New England and, well, direct rule from Ottawa, but indirect really um loyal to the king we can do that under the thumb yeah under the thumb sounds a bit crap if i'm i'm, if I'm being honest we'll be known as a 48 colonies sounds good revenge war against everybody it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting but um i think we've got to wait for another event to fire first new england's future the foreign policy Friends in the north, or go alone. Hmm. Irish relations. Gains claim in New York City. Cool, okay, we'll go ahead and do this. Let's have a wee read. We are now separate from our old countrymen. As such, we must find our own path in the world. Canada and National France insist that we help them reclaim their territories in Europe. No, you can help me reclaim my territories in America first. On the other hand, we could turn inwards and try to salvage what we can, creating a prosperous New England. I didn't mean to cancel that. So, I hope everybody is good and well. It uh, has actually been a while since I recorded. Just, uh, I've been lacking motivation to make videos recently. Not that work has been too stressful. Oh, you son of a gun. It's, t it's brought over the the Canadian tech for some reason. Um, yeah, great. That's definitely all the stuff I researched. Um, yeah, work work's not been terribly stressful but it's just rendered me um just tired i just can't be bothered when i get in from shifts to record not that i don't really want to it's just i've just worked a nine hour shift i'm just i just don't want to record but we're back i'm gonna do a wee recording session today get some videos out hopefully this will be out on thursday uh, Canada's ordered the appointment of Governor General to oversee New England. Many within New England had hoped that New England would become a full republic once independence was granted. Lolo's hopes appear to have been dashed. For now, we shall embrace democracy and are meager, uh, marginally independent from Canada. However, this is a worrying sign for things to come. Perhaps Canada could impose it as complete will on us. The position of Governor General has been handed to Prince Albert, also known as in our t uh, timeline, King George. Second in line for the throne and brother of the current King Edward VIII. He will guide New England, yet have no power, just like as in Australia or India. However, more elite members of society want to do away with us and instead install our as a king of New England. We are loyal to the crown. Ah, the dominion of New England. Perfect. Actually, it doesn't look like we have this completely. New England is a monarchy. Um... We'll join Isaac, or the ISAC. A delegation from the Canadian government arrived today. Yes, we oh, invest 50. It's going to put us in the negative, but... I don't know what to think of this flag. <laughs> the Dutch flag. That's that's what that's looking like. Yeah, that basically is a Dutch flag with the, the um, United Kingdom flag, and then I'm guessing that's New England flag with then American in the middle, it looks like. And assistance with the economy will always be the best choice to choose. Who, who um, general-wise, do we have? God save King the New King. Weeks ago, Prince Albert of Windsor was sworn in as Governor General by a Canadian lead court. Uh, Canadian led court. A majority noble and autocratic board of advisors runs New England from the shadows. Shadows spelt with two D's. While Albert feels he can never get enough of... Ah, actually, no. <laughs> I was going to say something there, but I'm not going to. Uh, free to disregard the will of Hartford Convention. Today, though, a stunning turn of events was witnessed. When Governor-General Albert of Windsor was officially crowned as King of New England, nobles and Canadians rejoice, as the citizens scorn. King Albert of Windsor has officially regarded the Republic dead, as he becomes essentially an absolute monarch. God save the King? As that, that's opened it up now. Perfect. Limited recognition's gone as well. A foreign monarch. Stability's done by four. The Boston Massacre. Oh. I'm, I'm sure we need to see above. But choose to fire on the citizens. 
Hmm, okay, yes, that's definitely what we'll do. As tensions stir in New England, the most radical of Anglophiles have been drawn to the side of the Loyal Coalition, headed by H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraft and a small group of writers have taken to the city of Providence to plot. However, anything coming out of this is unlikely. Due to Lovecraft's seclusion, the Irish in New England have also begun to take arms, as they believe that the radical Anglophiles will soon drive them out. The tensions that have been simmering below the surface finally erupted today. When protests erupted in Boston today over the coronation of autocratic king, most New Englanders have declared Canada and the Windsors illegitimate. People have been in an uproar and violence has been widespread. The largest of these protests has been in Boston. Nation's capital, don't you dare start dumping tea into the sea. We're not having a repeat of that. As the Irish and the English take up arms against each other, Canada desperately tries to bring stability to New England to no avail. In the end, Canada may have to take sides in what is rapidly coming a civil war. If such a war is to occur within New England, Canada has its eyes on the most radical Anglophiles. Those who will ensure Canada's rule over New England is secure. Fire all your rounds. Yes, that seems like a brilliant idea. It really does, and I'm being sarcastic. It's not a good idea whatsoever. Yep, so that's out the window. We could send direct quotes right in. We could. Crisis on the Danube, the 1937 elections. Austria has declared war in Hungary. When, when doesn't that happen? And Poland's joined in. Oh, great, we go to martial law. That's, that's fantastic. Canadians will send US to help us maintain order. Oh, I don't mind. Pro-imperial propaganda, recruitment population 2%. Don't bloody mind. Right, for the sake of this playthrough, I think it would make most sense if we went ahead and done Friends of the North. What does this give us? New England's foreign policy, a series of level 3 force will be built along the New English and Canadian Eastern Coast, back the French, infrastructure, wealth corporations. Cool. So our young nation must now create a foreign policy for itself. Two main schools of thought has, have presented themselves. One says we move closer to our allies in the North and help the Entente. The other promotes a more neutral approach to foreign policy that will see us govern ourselves. The prior will now be called the New England branch. After the seizure of New England by Canada, the region was put under the influence. Yes, we'll cooperate. As long as we're not a bloody puppet. Ah. That is, that is fine. The people in New England are ungrateful. They took our peaceful intervention as an invasion and tried to rebel against us. They cannot be reasoned with. They must be placed under direct Canadian rule until they are ready to, to act civil once more. This may not be popular with the people, but we do not need their approval. God save the king, and God help the people in New England. Do do we... Do, do, do we get... Independence. Dominion of New England. Yes, fantastic. I do love being a puppet. Well, at least we're going to import tea. The tea trade. Viscount Kennedy. Wait, what? Cool. Oh, and the Savoyard crisis has been resolved. I wonder what the Swiss have decided to do. Unwilling to allow radicals to take power. Uh, this new extension of the Empire, the Canadian military intervened to forestall a populist takeover in New England. Given the rather uncertain outcome of the democracy in the region, they have instead installed the Governor General with emergency powers for the period of emergency drawn from local stock. It sounds like we've um, we've basically got Palpatine ruling right, right now. He's been given emergency powers. Obviously, he's not going to give them up, is he? We're not going to do that. We're just going to kill everybody. Order 66. I was going to say Order 69 like I always do. Order 66. Get your mind out the gutter. Okay, you're free. The Austrians are... Well, they're at war like they always are. Who's over here? You. Yeah, cool. Well, it's a shame I'm going to be a puppet. Oh, I don't like being an occupied puppet. It sucks. I should have just went independent. The plot begins. Our own monarchy. House Astor or House of Kennedy? Joe Kennedy. Or who? Boston Joe. America retaken, award and titles. Hmm. 
Loyal to the king. Coronation in Boston. What? Oh! We've got independent monarchy controlled by New England's elite and by Canada's side. Oh, that is brilliant. Okay, cool. We can remove the puppet. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, I thought I'd done that. Oh, no. It's, it's literally the same thing. Cool. The Mozambique Bush War has begun. We will eventually play as Lovecraft as well. At some point. At some point in the near near future. It might just be an edited video that I do, actually. Okay. A Governor General. When New England beginning to finally return to some form of stability under King Albert, many have begun to wonder if the King should wield power himself or appoint someone in his stead. After all, the King is hardly even in New England, thus appointing someone to rule in his stead could remove the stress of leadership from his shoulders. This person would answer directly to Albert and serve his interests in the region, while also liking, uh, likely having some American ties. It's said that the main candidates for the new, uh, appointment of New England are Baron Fairhaven and Henry Rogers uh, Broughton, men with ties to both Britain and wealthy and the wealthy Rogers family and the wealthy Cornelius Vanderbilt III, Joseph Kennedy, is also being considered for the position due to his status as a collaborator and foreign minister. The king is said to inform us of his choice at noon today. So we have... Baron... I, I, I'm sorry, I don't like any of you guys, really. Um, no, Albert shall rule alone. Yeah, he's, he's, he can have all the power. Empower the Governor General. The Governor General's position, of course, temporary, as all patriarch in New Englanders know, it's not temporary. But so long as it is necessary, it must be a position capable of shepherding New England and defending imperial interests. Executive power will flow from the office of the Governor General, and the other governors of New English states will have to smile and tolerate it. And of course, what we're also going to have to do is we're going to have to build a hella thick army. Which, to be honest, as long as we have quality, we shall be fine. Quality over quantity. Because half of their divisions are going to be militias. Which is actually what all mine are right now. Oh, we have Chaffee. Harmon. Oh, there's Cornelius Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt III. Bingham III. Oh, look. John F. Kennedy. He is apparently a Navy boy. I was he not in the Navy? Oh, we've got Pershing. Leslie Groves. Sorry, we're not going to be using Candy for the time being. Yeah, I th I'm right in saying Kennedy was in the Navy. I'm sure I am. Do you know what? I've got my phone here. I'm going to Google it. So I, 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 For some reason, I think that is true. I'm sure it is. Um, Wikipedia. Oh, total listen, barred here, commune. That's not great. I don't know what the other news pop up was. Oh, and the Black Revolts here. Military service. United States Navy. There we go. Knew it. Knew it. I am a genius, guys. I know you don't need to tell me. You don't need to tell me. I am a genius. I don't know how that makes me a genius, but yep. Yeah. Road integration with Ottawa. Oh, well, Canada. We are continuing to build our economy and expand the road network. The question arose of which direction we should drive in. Well, the custom in America has always been to drive on the right. Canada has, since the British Revolution in 1925, driven on the left. Excuse me. Some political leaders have suggested we switch to driving on the left as an attempt to better integrate our road network into the Canadian. One, whilst others wish to stay driving on the right to further amplify that New England is not a British Dominion. Yeah, we drive on the side of freedom. I think that's the. I think that's right. Did they get minus ten relations because of, because we're driving on the right? What the? The appointment of Governor General. We didn't really get one. Oh, way we do. It's Albert. It seems that the largest problem in his way will be the local governors. These men are accustomed to holding significant power in their respective states. Just have them assassinated. Purged, just we'll just remove them, and some of them obviously expect to rule the region in its entirety. James Michael Curley, accustomed to being in charge of Boston and by extension the most powerful state in New England, has been the most vocal critic of this new system. A man like him will only get in our way. As such, we must grant new powers to the Governor General, but whatever we do, we must tread carefully. 
Should we grant the Governor General new powers over the military, increase his legislative powers, or allow him to override any decisions the court makes? Ooh. Mil uh, greater military powers. Which is alright. Help him sideline Congress. Or grant him power over the meddlesome court. I think it's got to be. Recruitable population plus 3%. Holy moly. Yes, he's going to have power over the courts. Let's declare martial law. Sometimes harsh measures are needed. New England is teetering on the edge of radicalism and it's time for us to call for Canadian help. After all, their intervention was the only thing that saved us from radicals during the provisional government. In the coming months, civil liber liberties must be limited if order is to be restored. Didn't think it. It's that turbulent for us. Uh, there's the Fourth Balkan War. Bulgaria will probably lose that. I, I, I bet my whole life savings on that happening. Uh, that's not terrible, but that is much better. Infantry divisions. There we go. Perfect. We can only get 26 divisions right now, which is... Nah, it's it's alright. It's alright, could be worse. Right, let's bin all of the utter garbage that we have. That's not a bad template. Russia inter Russia has not intervened in that. It's 1937, hasn't even kicked off yet. Oh, I'll happily keep that heavy armour division. We'll potentially get to that in the future. I oh, sorry, I got military police in it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um. Hmm. What now? Yes, delay. Ah, yes. Early mobilization, please. So, yeah, we've got 15 civvies. We'll get these four out, then we'll get a couple of you in there. I'm actually really happy with that and greater legislative powers. Right, martial law has been declared and Atlanta has fallen. Right, let's request reinforcements. New England is a vulnerable and vulnerable to enemies from within, as it is to those from abroad. The National Guard is overstretched and sometimes our loyalty is questionable. We need help. Our only option is to secure the reliable troops and help end our manpower shortage. Uh, is to ask the government in Ottawa for reinforcements. Ah yes, I can't wait for them to give us some really terrible um Apres Revolution in Peru. Okay, we're gonna check that one in a second. And 1937 World Series, baseball. And it's maybe gonna trigger a lot of Americans, but baseball sucks, man. It actually sucks. Not that I've ever watched a game to completion. Oh, it's a syndicalist. Baseball sucks. But before before you you completely the Boston Bees win it. Gives me political power and stability, so thank you. And uh, Nepal, what are you doing? Um, yeah, before you get too angry at me for saying that, cricket also sucks. It is probably even worse. Th they are probably the most boring things you could probably... I don't know how people can go and watch them. Like, I think I'd fall asleep. If I was suffering from insomnia, I think I'd go and watch either of those sports and I think it'd be cured in a second. Maybe a bit far stretch, but you'd get the mean off. <laughs> yes. Yes. New England is definitely needed to take that. Yep, I'm I'm not gonna send anyone over there. Oh and Ching one. And who is it still Puyi? Or Puyai? Oh, I'll, I'll take your guns, I guess. Thank you. Oh, who went down here? Who are you? Lai Zongren! The Langshang military government. I'm so sorry for the pronunciation. That is definitely incorrect. Kornilov's here. Kolchak still here. We have asked for reinforcements. Oh, for okay. Let's do Imperial Propaganda. 2% recruitment population. Weekly Manport 80. Surrender limit up. Encryption, decryption. Not too bad. War support that we don't need. 20s and 30s were not kind in the USA. New England relatively isolated. Started looking to its northern neighbour Canada for help. As a result, many across the states in New England have already accepted the necessity of the Canadian intervention, yet many see it as a foreign occupation. It was aimed to conquer the hearts and minds of these people, and help them see the necessity of intervention. 
Yeah, it could be worse. We could be under the rule of the CSA or any of these guys. The Pacific States is probably the only one we would actually get along with, even though they still absolutely hate us and we hate them. Ah oh, yes, brilliant. Order has been restored. Jack the Doberman. It's a weed. It's a, it's a, it's a good boy. That looks like a good boy right there. As man falls back into his usual routine of killing his neighbours, the animal world is not spared from the violence either. Happy story, however, emerged from the Connecticut, from Connecticut rather, where a young Doberman, ironically enough, named Jack, how, how is that ironic, was able to stop militia agents from blowing up a bomb in Hartford. I told you, look at that, that, that there is a good boy. Someone, someone pet that good boy. The dog was trained in cooperation with Connecticut and the National Guard when his patrol spotted the agent who promptly tried to escape from capture. With the courage of a true American, the little dog immediately ran after and pulled one of the two men down, leading to his capture. This dog is the man. Or the, 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 the dog, really. And this man later turned out to be none other than Paul Rashford, a target long sought after by the Hartford Police Department for his implication in the riots only a few months earlier. who seems to have established a whole network of operatives in Connecticut. While this capture by no means marks the end of the socialist threat in the state, Jack has dealt a heavy blow to their leadership. Wow, he's he's done even better than some of our troops, if we're being completely brutally honest. I think Huey and the Pacific States here are going to be uh, battling it out, I think, for who's going to be the victor. Let me go ahead and draw that. Um, right, okay, we've got a wee uprising in the Middle East there in the... Jamal Shammer. Muhammad... Ah, uh, Rashid. I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that middle bit. IBN. How do you pronounce the IBN bit? Talil Al Rashid. It's Muhammad something Talil Al Rashid. I think that's almost perfect. The Dominican Republic has capitulated. I don't think Haiti usually wins that, that often, but well done. The Oath of Loyalty. Our administration, however much we might sometimes dislike it, relies on the support of local bureaucrats and elected officials who were in power before Canada intervened. The problem is that these folks might not have the interests of our administration at heart. However, if we were to force them to pledge loyalty to our government, we could get rid of these principles enough to refuse it. Ah, when they say get rid of, they mean take them out back and pull out the old double barrel shotgun and put them down. It's like old yeller. Oh, Jabal Shammer won that quite easily. Although, it has left... Oh, uh, oh, the Sublime Ottoman Federation. Didn't even see you pop up. That must be one of the other events. Oh. Oh, I was going to say, that did not look good for Bulgaria. Oh, and things aren't looking great for Austria. This always happens. Austria actually sucks. The RDP is taking power in Bulgaria. We're going to research some stormtrooper blasters. And um, Portugal has joined the Entente. Ah, yes. I keep forgetting we're at war. What's the casualties like? Oh, for... Oh, and it's not going well. Oh, they pieced out. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's Ilria. Light the Sylvine fire. Oh, Oh, Republican victory in Brazil. Who's the leader when that happens? Oh, Getulio Vargas. And the pebble dash is happening in, in the south. Brutal troublemaker. Uh, the problem with the provisional government was that New England's leaders let the people make a choice in a time of great change and fear. People's faculties are not where they should be. And they cannot be trusted to make decisions that impact their future. With that being said, thank God for the Canadians. In loyalty to another benefactor, we have begun helping the RMCP. Uh, I'll round up the Revenant, the Sentinels, and all other stubborn so-called patriots resisting Canada's help. I like to see that. One stability from it, though. Not so much. The oath for loyalty. Today, hundreds of pol uh, politicians across New England are swearing oaths of loyalty to our new government, as well as the King in Canada. Through these oaths, we can find out who is willing to prove their loyalty, who still harbours sympathies for traitors. As the sun rises on New England, these words are heard. I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Edward VIII, King of New England. 
But he's not, as an Albert are king, his heirs and successors, and that I will faithfully reserve the laws of the Dominion of New England, and fulfil my duties as the Imperial citizens. With this oath complete, we have endeared our most prominent politicians to the Dominionist government, and now their commitment to the Imperial cause is recorded for all to see. I'd like to get some more stability from these pop-ups, we're only at 56. At least we can go ahead and change up the partial mobilisation, and the Visigard block is here. Hmm. Great faction Poland, and that is a very nice looking Poland. Hungary, of course, is still here. Social liberals. So, it, it's 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 going to be a bit boring. Hungary is going to be boring. They'll probably join us though, so I, I guess it could be worse. Yes, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, social conservatives, social liberals. Imagine that, when the Pacific States have got to Japan, yeah, yeah it make, makes sense. Um, Ilria, not so much. The fall of Rashidi Emirate. Oh. Okay. Um, and you and Britain declare war on uh, Ireland. Um, well, see you later, Michael Collins. Uh, oh, nope, you're... Uh, they, they instantly peaced out. Who, who's the incompetent fool that's leading the Union of Britain? Oh, but, yep, it's Tom, man. The new normal. <laughs> One stability. Cam has returned to New England. The radicalism that threatened to take control is gone, and we have firm control of the region. Better yet, the current Cam is the new is a new Cam. People have begun to accept the British presence, and many even identify with it. With the rest of the continent burns, New England seems like a serene garden. The Canadians as our groundskeeper. Ah, that's a lot of Germans. Ernest J. King. The Navy Junta is here. Okay, um, what is your tree like? Show me, show me the tree. Admiral Leahy, that is the a small tree. The canal we built. Oh, the British menace. Wow, okay. Well, we don't want you to win. 500... I thought it was political power. It's just 500 manpower. That's literally nothing. That wouldn't even fill one of our divisions. Nope. Um, How are we doing, actually? Uh, Red Flood, that's cool. Can we? Maybe? 85 short? I'll take that. We should be in the positive for guns. We have seven spare guns. Oh, you know how I said that the American Union state was doing good? I think I might change my uh, mind on that. Yeah, I, d I don't know if the audio is going to have cut it out or not when I edit it. Um, but if you hear a random like, beep every few like minutes, it's my bloody smoke alarm. It's faulty as hell. It's actually annoying me at this point. Uh, everyday life in New England. Now that our political cries, uh, cri cr crisis or cries have largely <laughs> abated, life has returned to normal in New England. Has it really, though? Our children learn that the British Empire and the Velcraig in their history classes and the newest innovations in Canadian science have made science classes more useful than ever for the rising generations. Our workers enjoy their mornings more than ever, with more than enough, more than enough maple syrup and tea to go around. What? I was going to say, what a combination, but mmm, pancakes with maple syrup. Maple syrup's just so bloody good. The King's men keep order in the factories and stomp out any leftist revolts of their infancy. In their infancy, giving our workers a sense of security they have been missing for a long time. Infrastructure programmes and lax borders have led to many reunions among those in New England with old British family ties and their kin in Canada. Our markets swell with products from every corner of the Entente and our treasury has only grown as a result of our trade with our imperial allies. Is the beginning of a new day in New England. Our stability is slowly going up. The Imperial Integration. Slowly but surely, more people are speaking. They are speaking of a dominion. A dominion of New England. Multiple, multiple dominionist parties have begun popping up and winning local elections. Petitions have been offered to Governor General Alwater first to begin reintegration into the Empire. Perhaps it's time. Um, mm, loyalty to the King. Yeah, I... Yeah, no thanks. Um, 
Yeah, I'd, I'd rather do this, if I'm being honest. Ottawa may have had the best intentions in mind when they occupied New England, but their guidance is not needed anymore. We can forge our own path outside of Canada's influence. Yeah, we'll, we'll stick around. We'll stick around and we'll... I need to own San Francisco. What the fuck? Um, uh, I was going to say, where, where is the nation of um, Islam? Oh, Nepal died. I was I was wondering what was happening there. Um Wow, that was that was such a fantastic war. I'm I'm so glad I was a part of that. Our reclamation efforts. Prodigal Sun. Imperial Prodigy. Cool, 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 cool. Reorientate trade. Cool. Cool 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 cool. So other parts of the tree. That increases our legitimacy. I don't think we can do any of these, can we? So this is just going to be the first focus. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that gives us 15 stability. That's definitely worthwhile doing. Uh, America's darkest hour. Harboring exile is 25,000. Um, America's darkest hour. Where the hell's America's darkest hour? Do you want... It's not over here, that's for sure. The Royal Marines. One times 150% research bonus. As good as it sounds. Oh, do I want to spend the political power? Yes. Yep, assist with the economy, please. That's that's what we're needing. We're up to 17.4. Hmm. Gives us two civvies and books of war measures. Oh, I just realised if they declare war in the CSA, I guess who's getting... Yeeted straight to that. Oh, yes, us. The Quaker Alliance. Originally disregarded and laughed at it by established politicians, Clarence Pickett's Quaker Alliance has managed to gain a considerable amount of sway within New England. Pickett has brought the Religious Society of Friends, aka Quakers, to the forefront of New English politics by offering unconditional support to immigrants and refugees alike. While working to change the church from a religious institution into an outspoken political party dedicated to international neutrality, pacifism, and Christian charity. Citing the progressive uh, uh, precedent set by the Roosevelt administration and the teachings of Jesus Christ, Pickett has begun drafting a set of co uh, crucial amendments for New England's constitution. Deemed the appeal to heaven, the Quaker platform aims to transform New England into a welfare state that can open its arms to the downtrodden across the shattered America continent. No, we do not want your radical socialism here, thank you. Yes, orders for Ottawa. While some rebels think they can pull the same stuff as they did in the 1700s, we have the situation under control. The attempted insurrection in Boston failed, and with the help of the Canadian military, other smaller attempted rebellions were put down. All plots have been dealt with, and New England is secure under Canadian rule. Perfect. But anyways, guys, we're going to leave that episode there. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back tomorrow with another episode. So until then, guys, do take care. Cheer bye, and then out.